Some of the most enigmatic objects in the universe are black holes. Black holes could be made of holograms. In actuality, the whole cosmos may be a hologram, like water flowing down a drain. The whole fabric of space and time seems to be draining away within some of the most mysterious phenomena in the cosmos, black holes. But what precisely are they? What exactly happens in a black hole? In today's video, we'll try to answer some of these questions. So, just what is a black hole? According to NASA, black holes are described as a location in space where gravity is so strong that even light cannot escape. Given that matter has been compressed into a small space, gravity is extremely powerful. And because light cannot escape the gravity of a black hole, it seems to be absolutely black, hence the name. But what if we told you that black holes are actually invisible? Yes, they are. So how can we see them? You might be wondering. Well, black holes may be seen with some sophisticated processing of data gathered from a variety of telescopes. We can, however, deduce their presence from their influence on other visible entities in space, such as suns and gas clouds. However, it may soon be possible to detect the event horizon barrier surrounding the black hole, or more specifically, the Hawking radiation emanating from it. If you are wondering what Hawking radiation is, it's generally thought to be made up of photons, neutrinos, and to a lesser extent, other kinds of heavy particles. Black holes come in four different varieties, and the nature and source of the black hole determine how they form. In essence, there are stellar black holes, supermassive black holes, miniature black holes, and intermediate black holes. Out of the four, we have one in our own galaxy, Sagittarius A, which is located at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Its size is 31 and a half times greater than the diameter of the sun, and its mass is greater than four million suns. Essentially, it is a super massive black hole. Fascinating, right? And how are they formed? We wouldn't dwell too much on this aspect, but they essentially originate from dying stars. But not just any star, it has to be huge. You might be wondering how big they have to be. So let's use our sun as an example. Even if it were to die, it couldn't create a black hole since a black hole requires at least 20 times the mass of our sun to form. Now that you are aware of what they are and how they are formed, let's discuss what happens inside them. The short answer is that physicists are not really sure. The long answer is that it depends on who you ask. However, every possibility is quite weird. And we like weird, so sit back as we get into it. When it comes to a place that is truly regarded as no man's land, the singularity at the heart of a black hole is just that, a region where matter has been compressed to an endlessly tiny point and all concepts of time and space have entirely collapsed. It actually does not exist. Something must substitute the singularity, but as previously said, we don't know what. Let's look over the various possibilities. And the most recent discovery is very intriguing. So, we mentioned at the beginning of the video that black holes may be holograms. So, let's dig into that. At least, that's one aspect of recent research published in the journal PRX Quantum. The research takes a closer look at what's within a black hole. It's also an attempt to comprehend the concept of holographic duality. However, it is crucial to note that the holograms we are discussing may not be what you are imagining, such as the sci-fi projections we see in movies. Instead, they are investigating how the inside and outside of a black hole are connected by utilizing the concept of holograms. Therefore, holographic duality is essentially a mathematical theory that tries to link theories of particles and their interactions with theories of gravity. All of this simply means the mathematical similarities between particle and gravity theories. Even if it seems a little strange, it's a fascinating idea. However, stick with us. So, gravity explains three dimensions, where particle theory only describes two. And in terms of black holes, the two theories are critical in defining how they work. In the current study, University of Michigan research scientist Enrico Rinaldi concentrated on these two hypotheses. He basically said, there are no particles in Einstein's general relativity theory, all that exists in space-time. Additionally, there is no gravity in the standard model of particle physics, only particles exist. He continued by saying, physicists have been attempting to connect the two different ideas since the last century, but the problem has long existed. So basically, our major understanding of what happens within a black hole is based on the theory of gravity, which tells us that it acts in the third dimension. So from the outside, space-time goes into and through a black hole. 
However, calculating the outside of a black hole differs greatly from calculating the inside. Despite the fact that the inside operates in 3D, the outside is always regarded as flat. Rinaldi's recent study uses two simulation methodologies at the same time to compute and explain the gravity of a black hole. Since humans cannot physically see what is happening within a black hole due to its intense gravitational pull, a mathematical model of what is happening must be calculated. As Rinaldi proposes, a holographic projection is the most effective way to represent how humans see what is happening within a black hole. Which two theories did Rinaldi combine then? As we previously stated, the theory of gravity is where much of our knowledge about black holes come from. Therefore, the fundamental concept was to merge these two bodies of knowledge. And to do this, they first utilized basic matrix models composed of blocks of numbers. It's a common framework seen in quantum computers where one-dimensional strings are utilized to represent particle theory. These frequently assist researchers in locating the ground state, which, according to Rinaldi, is crucial since it enables the creation of new objects. The researchers were able to explain what the gravity inside a black hole looks like using the models they created. When physicists solve matrix models like these, they are looking for a certain particle arrangement that represents the system's ground state, which is its lowest energy state. Unless you introduce anything that perturbs the system, nothing occurs to it in its ground state. According to Rinaldi, the values in the matrix models can be compared to sand grains. The model's ground condition is when the sand is level. However, you need to figure out how to smooth out any sand ripples, if there are any. The researchers initially turned to quantum circuits to address this. The quantum circuits in this approach are represented by wires in each qubit. A quantum bit of information is a wire. Gates, quantum operations that specify how the information will go down the wires, are positioned on top of the wires. The next step was for the researchers to examine the deep learning approach against the quantum circuit method. Deep learning is basically a type of machine learning that makes use of neural networks, a set of algorithms that seek for correlations in data in a manner akin to how the human brain finds them. Neural networks are employed to develop facial recognition software by being fed thousands of photographs of people from which they derive certain landmarks of the face in order to identify unique photos or generate new looks of humans who do not exist. But as for the holograms we mentioned previously, in this case, a hologram is a flat, 2D picture that displays an image in three dimensions, 3D. Okay, let's use a hologram of Tupac to explain it in simpler terms. The finalized visuals of the 3D Tupac that we saw were projected onto a 2D Mylar sheet. Even though what they were actually viewing was all on a 2D surface, this provided observers with the same visual information they would have received with a genuine 3D Tupac. In other words, scientists have essentially defined a black hole with a three-dimensional core that is projected to us by particles that are computed in two dimensions. But based on the most recent discoveries, a black hole's inside can now only be adequately represented mathematically. We can't really know if what we are seeing is all there is to see in 2D, 3D, or beyond until we genuinely have the capacity to fully experience the inside of a black hole in a way that doesn't match our present knowledge of the nature of the universe. So, despite the fact that everything we now understand is mathematical, what do you think is inside a black hole? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below.